Welcome into the broadcast, everybody. I am Samuel Reese coming to you live tonight for more CONCACAF Gold Cup action. And tonight, it's Group B that takes center stage with the United States back in action as they square off with Martinique in the nightcap of this Group B doubleheader from Children's Mercy Park in Kansas City, Kansas. It's a 9 p.m. local time start, and we get set for the opening kickoff as we will get right into the starting lineups right now. In fact, first for Martinique, it is uh, Guille in goal for the underdogs. And it is uh, at the back, uh, Gerald Dondon, uh, Jean Sylvain Babin, Sebastian Cretonois, and Patrick Berner. Meanwhile, in the midfield for Martinique, it's Samuel Camille and uh, Daniel Hare. Johnny Marajo and Kevin Fortuné. And then the two up top are Stefan Abal and Emmanuel Rivier. Martinique are set for a tough task, but you never know what can happen. The referee tonight is Mario Escobar of Guatemala as the coin toss takes place between the two captains in Cretinois and Walker Zimmerman. And speaking of Zimmerman, he is the 13th captain under Craig Ber under Greg Berhalter so far. And getting into that U.S. starting lineup, it is Matt Turner in goal. He started the opening game, gets the start tonight. It's a 3-4-3 formation from Greg Berhalter tonight. A number of changes made. The outside backs, Miles Robinson and the aforementioned Walker Zimmerman. James Sands gets the start at center back. Meanwhile, in the midfield, it's... George Bello, uh, Eric Williamson, Gianluca Buzio, and Shaq Moore. And then the three up top are Matthew Hoppy, Daryl DK, and Christian Roldan. So an exciting starting 11. If that doesn't excite you as a U.S. men's national team fan, I'm not sure what will. As we are ready to go from Kansas City for the kickoff of this one. Thank you, everybody, for tuning into the broadcast tonight. Martinique lost their opening match to Canada 4-1. The U.S., all by a little bit in underwhelming fashion, defeated Haiti in their opener. And that was a 1-0 final score. The United States, with a win in this match, would clinch a spot in the quarterfinals of this CONCACAF Gold Cup. And so it is a big one from... Kansas City, Martinique have to avoid defeat to keep their chances alive, even though a draw would still make it very tough on Martinique to have a chance at going through. But we'll see how it plays out tonight. We're ready for kickoff, and the opening whistle is coming any moment now. It is uh, a bit wet in uh, Kansas City, wet conditions could certainly play a factor. It's been raining throughout the day. It actually cleared up quite a bit for the Haiti-Canada game earlier. Um, and it looks like the rain's not coming down at the moment, but wet conditions certainly playing a factor. And we are underway in Kansas City, Kansas, where all three of the U.S. group stage matches are taking place. Martinique in white, the U.S. in red and blue. And off we go as the United States look to win not only to get the three points, but to win in convincing fashion. And we'll see if they can do just that tonight. Thank you, Victor, for tuning in. I appreciate that. Um, all right, I'll check that out when I have the opportunity to, Victor. And here is... A clip ball forward by Walker Zimmerman, headed into the middle by Shaq Moore, laid back to DK, deflected pass, cleared away by Burner. And it will be a United States throw-in on the far side of the pitch. This is an exciting young team. The average age 23 for this U.S. side. So that pass just had a bit too much weight from Matthew Hoppy, and there you go. The average age of tonight's starters, look at the contrast. For Martinique, 31.9 years. For the United States, 23.2. And the United States, with the starting 11, the average 
amount of caps for the national team, five. So it's a golden opportunity for so many of these players uh, to, to really impress under Greg Berhalter, who's had 21 wins, three draws, six losses in his tenure as U.S. men's national team head coach. What's going on, Nate the Great? How, you do, how are you doing, man? I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, my day's going well. I've had a pretty good day. Um, yeah, not going to lie. I got, I got my uh, car detailed. I got it cleaned earlier, which is nice. It looks brand new. Um, and yeah, I'm ready for some gold cup action. I always, I love gold cup, but on days when the U S play, it's, it's extra special. I'm always extra excited for United States matches and we'll see what type of performance they can put forward tonight. Here's Miles Robinson over to James Sands. Gianluca Buzio. Buzio's pass intercepted as that was picked off by Burner. What's going on, Karam? How you doing, man? At least I got something to watch. I know. There's like nothing going, nothing else going on in the sports world, I feel like, uh, today. Uh, the Red Sox-Yankees, of course, got... Um, postponed because the Yankees had uh, some COVID positives. Uh, so that was disappointing for myself as a Red Sox fan. I was looking forward to watching that match or watching that game uh, before this uh, U.S. match in the Gold Cup. But, um, yeah, no, the NBA Finals doesn't resume until Saturday. So, yeah, it's uh, not, not, not an eventful day in the sports world, but at least we have Gold Cup. This is sent out wide by Matthew Hoppy, the Schalke player. Here's Shaq Moore, who impressed in the opening game against Haiti. Great cross in. Bello controls, and his shot's blocked. The Atlanta United player with an opportunity now lays it back to the hometown kid in Gianluca Buzio. Well, I guess not necessarily hometown. He is from North Carolina, but moved to Kansas City at the age of 14, was brought up in the Sporting Kansas City Academy, and now, of course, plays for Sporting KC. What's going on, Emmanuel? How are, you, how are you doing, man? Appreciate you stopping by. Yeah, the Yankees are scared of playing us. Exactly, Karam. Exactly. That's definitely what it is. They know they would have lost. How do I think the match is, uh, is going to go? Um, I'm expecting a thorough U.S. victory. I mean, this is, this is even though it's a U.S., you know, B slash C team uh, as DK, did he save that ball? Yes, he did. A corner kick one as that went off of Jean Sylvain Babin. Um, but yeah, going back to your question, Emmanuel, um, the U.S., even with a B slash C team, th they should be far superior to this Martinique side who, no offense to Martinique, but, uh, they're, they're not even, they're not even recognized by FIFA. Um, they're, they're a French province. So, um, I'm, I'm expecting the U.S. to, to win comfortably. I'll say 4-0. I was thinking of 3-0. I'm going to say 4-0. I'm, I'm feeling a big performance tonight from the U.S. Yeah, the Yankees are mediocre this year, Karam. They are. They're only like three games above 500. You love to see it. The header is away by Martinique. Now it's Eric Williamson, who's had a fantastic season with Portland. Great ball ahead. Hoppy the shot, but a diving save made. Um, Guillet Melion, and uh, he was certainly tested a lot in that uh, Canada game. Martinique fell to Canada 4-1 in their opener. Martinique actually scored the opener in that match, but then Canada scored four unanswered. Yeah, Nate, I think in Kansas City, I know they were getting rain all day long, so that that's why the, the field is a bit uh, damp, yes. Uh, there are some wet spots, no doubt about it. Yeah, Emmanuel, uh, I think, uh, I mean, the U.S. should win by, by three or four goals, in my opinion, uh, as that's a trip by Stefan about, and it will be a free kick in a promising position for the United States. Eric Williamson got clipped. <laughs> Yeah, for sure, Karam. No doubt about it, man. <laughs> yeah. 
And so an early opportunity for the United States to grab that opening goal. Of course, they scored just seven minutes into the Haiti match. That was the only goal. It came from Sam Vines. He's not starting tonight. Sam Vines, there's a lot of rotation within the side. Vines actually today uh, was uh, officially making the move to Royal Antwerp in Belgium. Vines currently with the Colorado Rapids, so he'll be heading to Belgium for to play for Antwerp. And it's Buzio on the set piece over the wall and just over the bar. Not a bad effort from the 19-year-old. What's going on, J.A.? How you doing, man? Yes, let's go. Absolutely, man. Fire it up for tonight. Uh, thank you, Rocky Grounds, for tuning in. Who's behind me? Um, no action. <laughs> you mean what's behind me? I, uh, I've i got a little bit of everything behind me. I've got a, a sports broadcasting certificate there uh, from a few years ago. And then I've got three frame soccer balls and then another one there. Uh, each soccer, my dad coached uh, college soccer, and each soccer ball represents a uh, hundred wins in his coaching career. The United States advance with a win. Canada, meanwhile, advance with a U.S. win or draw. So if the U.S. Uh, win, both they and Canada will be through, and that exciting U.S. Canada matchup on Sunday will decide the group winner. What's going on, Yoshi Bros? How are you doing? Uh, but yeah, Rocky Grounds, as you can see, I've got a globe right there. Uh, I've got some scarves on the wall, a tactical board up there. It's a soccer-heavy backdrop, and that green thing behind me is my ping-pong table, actually, which I'm eventually going to move into my garage for uh, the summer. Um, thank you, Philip, for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'll definitely check it out. I'll definitely uh, Google it, uh, Philip. I'll get around to it um, at halftime. I'll check it out. Um, only two more days until you turn 19, Yoshi Bros. That's awesome, man. Well, happy early birthday. Hope you have a great birthday, man. Yeah, I know. Uh, that was that was a thrilling, thrilling European Championships Uh uh, it was definitely a it was definitely a pleasure calling uh, plenty of matches in that tournament. And hats off to Italy. I mean, they they were the best team throughout the tournament, so they deserve the title in that. And uh, it was it was a great final against England. It was it was. They have to. They have to. Uh, Emmanuel. They have to. Um, there. There's no excuses. Yes, I mean, I'd I'd be absolutely shocked if they did not. So, yes, I am aware of that, uh, Yoshi Bros. I did hear the news that uh, the Bruins re-signed Carlo, a pretty a pretty big contract as well. But um, yep, yep, they're discussing uh, the possibility of re-signing Hall as well. Yeah. I was surprised by how much they're uh, they're paying Carlo, to be honest with you, because he is injury prone. I, I like him; he's a good defenseman, but he is injury prone. That's my one concern with him. As this Martini cross from Johnny Marajo, uh, blocked by Miles Robinson, it will be Werner to take the Martinique throw in. Ten minutes played, no goals yet. It's a heavily favored U.S. team against Martinique tonight. This is back with the goalie, Melian. Melian going long, and that will end up all the way with Matt Turner of the New England Revolution. Who do I think is going to win Champions League this season? Uh, good question. You think PSG has a strong team? They do. Yeah, they made some uh, some big offseason moves. In this series history, by the way, uh, well, these two sides have only met twice. Back in the 2003 Gold Cup group stage when the U.S. won 2-0. And then rather recently in the 2017 Gold Cup group stage, these two sides met. It was a 3-2 win for the U.S. I actually remember that game quite well. Um, yeah, the U.S. got the win in that match. But uh, it was certainly uh, not an easy victory, as uh, many would have expected. Uh, but yeah, who do I think is going to win the Champions League? Um Man, it's obviously very early to predict, but um, 
Yeah, PSG is a good shout. I don't know though. PSG they always they always seem to disappoint in the end. Um, oh man, this is tough. You know what? Mm, I don't know. Bayern could Man City bounce back? This is an out swinging ball in. Oh, and it was a good service, but Martinique able to clear their box. Walker Zimmerman was in the area. Quick throw and taken by the U.S. You know what, Emmanuel? I'm going to go. Man. I'm going to say Manchester City. I know they just lost, but I feel like they're they're going to come back strong. I'm going to go with Man City. Uh, I'm not super confident with that pick, though. We'll see. I'll say it's going to be between Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea, um, PSG, Bayern Munich. I don't know about Real and Barca, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah, I'll say Man City right now. I thought they'd win this past Champions League, and they didn't. The possession early on, 77% for the United States. No surprise there. Yeah, the Bruins could sign Landis Gog. I, I, I would be all for that. Three shots early on from the U.S. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be mad if the Bruins moved on from Tuka Rask, uh, to be honest, Yoshi Bros. Mm, yeah. I don't know. There's always a chance the Bruins could sign some big players. But, um, yeah, Landis Gog's probably the most likely one. Off the top of my head. We'll see as this ball is a long one forward. Bello will chase it down. George Bayo back for Matthew Hoppy. Great cross in, and the header is home. It's Daryl DK. Who else? And the United States grab an early lead. The Orlando City striker who loves to score goals gets one here. He Got the start tonight, and boy, did he take full advantage. The United States grabbed the early lead against Martinique. Matthew Hoppy making his first start. Gorgeous ball in. Left on marked was Daryl DK, but still a great header. Off the post and in. And the United States strike early. A gorgeous delivery from Hoppy. And DK did the rest. The U.S. are on top. Excellent finish from DK, who this past season, of course, uh, sp uh, had a lone spell at Barnsley where he was tearing it up there in the championship in England. Uh, but ultimately, Barnsley fell just short of promotion. They lost in the uh, playoff, championship playoff, uh, promotion playoff semifinal, I should say. And uh, after that, Fun run with Barnsley for DK came to an end. Uh, DK did go back to Orlando City where he continues to score goals at a quick rate for Orlando. That foul is committed by Christian Roldan. Christian Roldan playing for the U.S. in this Gold Cup. His brother Alex playing for El Salvador. Uh, and his brother Alex actually scored for El Salvador uh, against... Uh, Guatemala in the opening game of the Gold Cup for El Salvador. So uh, definitely interesting with two brothers representing different countries. And it was Babine taken down there. Hoppy committing the foul. Quick restart from Martinique. Through ball cut out. Good read by Walker Zimmerman. Yeah. Now it's back with Turner. Perfectly clean challenge as it's won back by about. Appreciate all of you guys tuning in tonight. It's just the start the U.S. wanted. Now it's Hoppy in possession. It's now held by Williamson. Williamson the of the Portland Timbers back to... James Sands, who plays for NYCFC 
in MLS. This ball rolled ahead by rolled on. Shaq Moore the cross just behind DK. Now a chance. Hoppy had his effort blocked. It was Bobine getting in the way. Nearly a second goal for the United States. Now it's Gianluca Buzio. Buzio for Miles Robinson. Once again for more. This ball whipped in. Edge of the box. It was Fortunate with a block. U.S. still with it. Oh, and that's a heavy challenge. As the foul is committed by Marajo. Oh, I greatly appreciate the uh, kind words. Thanks so much, Medina, for tuning in. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I uh, do play-by-play -play commentary for a variety of uh, of sports, to be honest, and a variety of of cups when of com of competitions when it comes to soccer. But yes, I was uh, I was on the call for a lot of Euro games uh, over the past month. Um, I did some Copa America games. I did the final uh, between Brazil Argentina. Great to see Messi finally win a trophy. Um, and yeah, now I'm covering, trying to cover m m uh, a lot of the Gold Cup games, uh, especially the U.S. matches. And then I'll be covering the U.S. women's national team at the Olympics. And this ball is floated in. DK's header just wide. Daryl DK is hungry for another one. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to international competitions, uh, yeah, I do a little bit of everything. Uh, I love international soccer competitions each summer. I, I absolutely love it. Um, but uh, yeah, and uh, when it comes to club soccer, uh, I do a good amount of MLS, a good amount of Premier League. I do some Serie A, Bundesliga, uh, even some La Liga. Um, and then Champions League, of course, I do. I even did some Europa League. Uh, this past season. Uh, but yeah, Champions League was certainly a blast to cover. Um, yeah, I do some CONCACAF Champions League also. So a little bit of everything. I greatly enjoy it. Yeah. Look at the Group B live standings. Canada and the U.S. both on six points. Martinique and Haiti would be eliminated if this result held. They each have zero points. In fact, Haiti have already been eliminated after falling in their opening two matches all right sounds good yoshi bros uh, thanks for tuning in i'll see you soon the u.s advance with a win canada advance with a u.s winner draw those are the simple scenarios and it's looking like that u.s canada final group stage match is shaping out to be a battle for first place so it appears as though both teams will have their ticket to the quarterfinals already punched Come Sunday. This is now back with Bobine. You'll find the keeper, Guille Melian. That pass picked off, and now Williamson leading the charge for the U.S. Slide tackle there, and it's a clean one from Hare. Hare with a clean challenge, and now Martinique on the counterattack. This is Burner out wide. Looking to play it into the middle, but Busio came up with the steal. 20 minutes in, U.S. up by a goal. And that through ball was just ahead of Daryl DK. U.S. just rushing things a bit too much. Now it's back with the keeper, Melian. But yeah, as I was mentioning at the top of the telecast, Martinique are not recognized by FIFA. So this is... They can only participate in CONCACAF competitions. So this is the biggest stage this Martinique team uh, will participate on. So the Gold Cup is like their World Cup. And uh, it's definitely an interesting situation where Martinique are not eligible to participate in, you know, FIFA World Cup qualifiers and, of course, ultimately a FIFA World Cup Uh so yeah, it's it's definitely strange, but at least they do have the CONCACAF Gold Cup to participate in, despite not being a FIFA nation. This ball chipped ahead. It could be danger for the U.S., but a nice recovery run by Walker Zimmerman, who heads it back to the hands of Turner. It was Emmanuel Riviere making the run for Martinique. 
Here's Gianluca Busio. The U.S. 12 wins, 2 draws, no defeats in their last 14 Gold Cup group stage matches. Their last loss in the group stage of the Gold Cup came in 2011, 10 years ago, to Panama. So it's been quite a while since the U.S. fell in the group stage of this competition. But of course, the group stage, I'm not going to say it's a tune-up for the U.S., but it's like a tune-up uh, because the knockout stages is when things get serious. And for a U.S. team expecting to win it all, the group stage uh, should be nothing but routine when it comes to not uh, only advancing, but hopefully finishing first. Here's a ball crossed in. Matthew Hoppy's there, but coming in was Bobby. It's turned over in a dangerous area. Hoppy lays it back. Busio the blast. He struck the bar. Follow-up attempt, and it's over the line. Daryl DK again. He has a second goal for the United States. And in the 23rd minute, the U.S. are flying. Daryl DK is flying. He's already got a brace. A bit of a sloppy goal this time around, but he won't care. The U.S. won't care. It's 2-0, the red, white, and blue. Well, Busio had a great chance. He sent a cannon off the crossbar. And then on the follow-up, it was DK who was the first to react. The leaping header. And it looked like Camille actually got the last touch. So this might go down as an own goal. We'll, we will see. I'm going to give it to DK. But uh, Camille made a mess of it. And the U.S. have doubled the lead. They're rolling in Kansas City. And the American Outlaws are certainly enjoying their night so far. <laughs> Thank you, Cruz, for joining the broadcast and Runce as well. The U.S. could be in business again. They have ruled it a Camille own goal. So even though I thought that it was DK with a second, uh, he certainly was the creator of that goal. Well, Busios was, but uh, DK certainly, uh, his header led to that own goal from Camille. And uh, I'll get to your guys' questions in a moment. Um, so, yeah, my final score prediction, well, I said at the beginning of the broadcast, 4-0. That, that prediction's looking good. It might even be more than that. We'll see. It's already 2-0 U.S. My predictions on, on, the, on the whole tournament, um, as a U.S. supporter, I hate to say this, but I, I do think Mexico will win it all. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that with shame because the U.S. have a, you know, a B slash C team. You know, it's... It's not their strongest squad by any means. Mexico, meanwhile, uh, have have a really good have a really good uh, team here. You know, it's it's just about an A team for Mexico here at the tournament. So, I, I expect the U.S. to make it to the final. I think we'll, as many expect, we'll get we'll get a U.S. Mexico final. I'd love for the U.S. to win and pull off that upset. Uh, but Mexico just have a stronger team at this tournament, and that's why. I would give them the slight edge. Yeah, 2-0 already, Nate. Yep, they're rolling. Meanwhile, it was a foul committed by Bobin. He took down Matthew Hoppy. A little slow to get up the Schalke man. What's going on, Maine? How, you're do how are you doing? Appreciate you tuning in. Appreciate all of you guys stopping by. Yeah, that's a good point, uh... Uh, Lozano is injured. Chucky Lozano suffered that uh, horrible injury, really. Here is Hoppy again and sliding in. Who did it touch last? The answer is Hoppy. The U.S. fans not buying that. A goal kick is awarded to Martinique. Um. But yeah, that Lozano injury, that, that was scary, man. So yeah, they are without Lozano. That is a big blow. What do you mean? It's great to see Mexico below El Salvador in the table. It's wonderful to see. <laughs> uh, as a U.S. fan, um, I love to see Mexico below El Salvador in the table. But I do expect Mexico to beat El Salvador in the final group game. So I think Mexico will ultimately finish first in that group. But uh 
They did have that little hiccup in their opener against Trinidad and Tobago. The shots already 9 nothing U.S. It's been utter domination. The shots on goal, 2 nothing. As that's last touched by George Bellow. Throw in here for Brunner. Sliding into key possession was Marajo. Now it's Bobina ahead for Burner. Burner wins a throw in. Martinique looking to fight back, already trailing by two. They've been completely outplayed. We'll see if they have any fight in them whatsoever because there's still a lot of match left, of course. And the U.S. once again have it. On the far side, it's tonight's captain, Walker Zimmerman, with the ball. Now to the center back, James Sands. Back wide for Zimmerman. 28th minute, U.S. up 2-0. First it was Daryl D.K., then an own goal. For the U.S. second goal. This ball clipped over the top, and it falls to the hands of Melian, the Martinique keeper. Martinique uh, do belong to France. That's why they're not a FIFA member. In fact, the French national anthem is played before every game that Martinique plays in. And a number of these players uh, play in the French lower divisions. And uh, a good amount of them also were uh, either born in France and have parents from Martinique or the other way around. The United States, by the way, have had 46 players earning their first cap in 31 matches under Burhalter. That's just extraordinary. So a lot of young players getting their opportunity since Burhalter took over. And, of course, uh, Burhalter will assess all the talent he has and assemble the, his best roster possible for those World Cup qualifiers in September. It's just around the corner. Before we know it, it will be time for those World Cup qualifiers. Here is Daniel Herre. Herre with the ball forward, and Marajo was offsides. Who wins tomorrow? Uh, Jamaica and Costa Rica. Yeah, I expect. I, I expect Jamaica and Costa Rica to get the wins uh, tomorrow, Medina. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, Jamaica play Guadeloupe and Costa Rica play Suriname. Yeah, I, I expect Jamaica and Costa Rica to get the job done. Uh, I'm looking forward to that Jamaica-Costa Rica uh, when, they, when they meet uh, in the final group game. And I think ultimately both of them will get the three points tomorrow, and it will be Jamaica and Costa Rica uh, squaring off for first place in the group come next week. Uh, but, yeah, I don't really see Jamaica and Costa Rica having problems in their matches tomorrow. You never know, though. Anything can happen in CONCACAF. We've certainly learned that over the years. Third quarter of the match here for the U.S. 30 minutes played down in Kansas City. And the cross sent in. It looked like Hoppy took a spill. There was actually Christian Roldan of Seattle. No penalty, however. And Martinique clear up the line. It was last touched by the visitors. Throw in for the U.S. Well, the shirt of Roldan was certainly tugged, but Typically, you're not going to see that called, even though, by the law, it probably should have been a PK. You're not going to typically see that. Yeah, I know. I know, Maine. Um, Costa Rica are not using Navas that much anymore. I, it's strange. I mean, he hasn't officially retired, I don't think, from the national team, but yeah, I don't know what's going on there. For the last couple of years, Navas just hasn't been involved with the Costa Rica national team. It's quite strange. Um, yeah, because he's a world-class keeper. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know what, what's going on there. I don't know if Navas will ever play again for Costa Rica. In all honesty, that was a near turnover by Williamson. And he did actually have it poked away and committed a foul in retaliation. <laughs> Marajo 
of Martinique wants a yellow card shown. Not sure if that's going to happen, but this will set up a free kick for Martinique in a promising position. Yeah, it was just a matter of Williamson being a little bit too nonchalant on the ball, a little too calm to the point where he had a Marajo coming right on his tail and eventually stealing the ball. Turner sets up his wall. Three on the wall for the U.S. And it's a really good chance for Martinique to score their opening goal. They haven't tallied a shot yet. We'll see what they can make of this opportunity in the 32nd minute of play. The Guatemalan referee blows his whistle. Here's the strike just over the bar. In fact... It looked like Turner got a piece of it. That's what Martinique are claiming, but a goal kick has been given. It was Daniel Harrell with the chance. Not a bad effort. And let's see the camera from inside the goal. Did Turner get a touch here? Well, that's too hard to tell. Yeah, the U.S. scored another one since he left Karam. They're rolling right now. Absolutely. Could they get a third here? Matthew Hoppy. Ahead, and now it's laid off by Moore to DK. Great pass for Roldan, but tracking back for the steal was one of Martinique's star players, Kevin Fortuné. They will, Karam. They will. They'll get into the World Cup. Oh, wow. DK has been credited for the second goal now. How about that? Originally, CONCACAF ruled it in own goal, but that has since been changed. So DK... After all, as I said in real time, has been credited with the second goal. So scratch that. No own goal on that second goal. DK has a brace. I mean, his header was heading on target. So uh, by rule, even though Camille made a complete mess of it, um, DK should get credit, and he did. What's going on, Luxers? How you doing? Yeah, I know. Haiti were eliminated. Yeah, that was a disappointing result earlier for, against Canada for Haiti. Yeah. Yeah, and if this result holds, Martinique will be eliminated also. You are correct on that, Luxers. Yeah, Guatemala became the first team eliminated yesterday, and Haiti have joined them since. Martinique seemed to be joining those other two eliminated teams as well. By the way, the U.S. have had nine straight wins on home soil, outscoring their opponents in those nine matches by a score of 34-3. to three. So the U.S. on home soil have been completely dominant, and they've had 11 straight wins against CONCACAF teams also. Their last loss came back in 2019 to Canada. That was a 2-0 defeat up in Toronto in a CONCACAF Nations League match. Just over 10 minutes left in the first half. <laughs> That's true, Luxor. Is Haiti get the consolation prize of uh, beating Martinique on su on Sunday? Which I, I expect. I expect them to beat Martinique. You never know. But yeah, that's. Uh, I, I was, you know, I, I was thinking maybe Haiti could get a draw. Give credit to Canada. They they looked good. Two four one wins now in the tournament. So. Uh, Certainly panning out to be a good matchup between the U.S. and Canada on Sunday. That pass intercepted. The takeaway from James Sands. Now out wide with Bello. Bello finds space. Looking for DK. Now a bouncing ball. It's back with Bello. He'll square it for Buzio. Now he'll reset to the far side. Here's a shot. Save made. And Melian quickly covers up the rebound. The United States on the verge of a third goal. Yeah, most definitely, Cruz. Canada have looked solid. I'll give them credit. Uh, you know, they don't they don't have Alfonso Davies, uh, of course. He got injured before the tournament. Um, I thought that was going to be a big blow for them, but uh, no, they're they're rolling right now. They're doing real well. I'm looking forward to that U.S. Canada match. It should be a good test for the United States because that Canada team uh, gets better. They're they're getting better and better year by year. Yeah, I think the U.S. will be Canada as well on Sunday, um, but it's no guarantee. 
Uh, I think it'll be a hard fought match. I do. Um, some familiar MLS names on that Canada team as well. Should be a good one. As that pass will end up in the hands of Guille Melian. He'll put the ball on the ground. 36 minutes played. Daryl DK has both U.S. goals. Talk about making an immediate impact with an opportunity. Starting his first competitive match for this U.S. team, of course, as most of these players are. And DK certainly impressing. Well, that's a poor back pass. And it's given away by Miles Robinson. But a great recovery. Walker Zimmerman in there to take it away from Rivier. And now Matthew Hoppy with a nifty touch by Bobbeen. Oh, and that's a crunching tackle, but a clean one as Bella lost it. Now it's a pa it's passed ahead by Fortune, and a foul will be called against Busio. That was a bit of a sloppy sequence there. Busio seems a bit amused at the decision by the referee. Yeah, Canada-U.S. Sunday should be a great one, Medina. I can't wait to be on the call for that match. The foul 6-6. Six, six, dead even between both sides. Yeah, I think uh, Canada should be a, a good test, and uh, it'll be good for the U.S. to uh, get ready for the knockout stages because Canada will be uh, no easy matchup, that's for sure. U.S. deal quite well on the Martinique free kick. And now here they come on the counter. They've got numbers forward. Busio looking to lay it ahead. The pass was cut out, but it's right back with Busio. He gets knocked off balance, but it's a clean takeaway. And now Martinique off to the races. Here's a long-range effort. <laughs> Going for the spectacular was Fortuné. But Matt Turner was certainly alert. And no problem for the Revolution keeper. And speaking of the U.S.-Canada, a reminder that that match is Sunday, 5 Eastern time, 2 Pacific. Should be a great one. I'll be on the call for it as well. Zimmerman sends it wide. That'll be the final day in both groups A and B before we get set for the knockout stages. That's in behind for a corner. Last touch coming off of, it looks like, Camille. I hope so, Luxers. I hope the U.S., if they if they do meet Mexico in the final, uh, which I certainly would be all for. U.S. Mexico finals always deliver. I hope that I hope the U.S. would beat will beat them. Here's Busio taking the fourth corner out, swinging delivery. Header won the near post by Martinique, and now Riviere. Draws the foul. George Bello, the guilty one this time. Fortieth minute of play. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in tonight. A reminder of what those Group B live standings look like. Canada and the United States both on six points. Canada do possess the superior goal difference. And then Haiti and Martinique, as it stands, eliminated from the tournament, both on zero points. I will say, it's relieving to see this Gold Cup tournament uh, where just the top two teams in each group advance, as it should be. We, of course, saw the Euros where four of the six best third-place finishers uh, went through to the knockout stage. And then Copa America, where it was a laughable format, where four out of the five teams in each group advanced to the knockout stages. It's good to see the group stage uh, meaning more with just two out of the four teams in each group going through to the knockout stages. Ah, come on, Luxers. Come on, man. <laughs> 
We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Am I going to be live for the Honduras game? Uh, yes, actually, Nate. I am planning to be on the call for the Honduras game. I won't be out of town until uh, Monday. So, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm looking forward to that Honduras-Panama game uh, very much. So, uh, yeah, I, I do plan to be on the call for that one, Honduras-Panama Saturday night. Foul committed by the U.S. in the midfield. Short free kick taken. Final minutes of the half, Daryl DK scoring both U.S. goals. That's knocked away by James Sands, and now it's Matthew Hoppy ahead for Buzio. Buzio's tripped up. Free kick for the U.S. There's still a question around what the official correct pronunciation of Gianluca Buzio's name is, as this is... A near own goal. Daryl DK, so close to a hat trick. It was stabbed away at the last second by Camille. And it will be another U.S. corner kick. Some say the correct pronunciation is Busio. Others say Buzio, like it's a Z instead of an S, because it is an Italian name. His uh, Gianluca's father is from Italy. And uh, when Gianluca was asked about what the official correct pronunciation is, he said, ask my dad. I'm going with the Italian version. I think it sounds a bit better. Buzio. It sounds truly Italian, doesn't it? As Buzio plays it short. Now it's taken to the end line and floated into the back post by Bello. Onto the ball is Zimmerman. 43rd minute. That cross was blocked. And now Martinique clear. There's a man down behind the play over the end line. Play continues for the moment with the injured player off the pitch. Here comes a chance. Walker Zimmerman in, and he's denied from point blank range. A nice save by D.A. Millian. And the Martinique player still down. The referee elects for play to still continue. Here's Buzio. Buzio tripped up a clean challenge, and now Martinique the other way. Another turnover, however, Buzio forcing Marajo to give it away. The injured Martinique player is now back into the field of play. Here's Buzio. He was trying to cross it, but it ends up right into the arms of Melian. Yeah, I know, Luxers. The, the way the U.S. have been playing, they probably should have a third goal by now. I mean, they've been completely dominating. Yeah, exactly, Rainer. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate that, Rainer. Uh, a reminder of these scenarios. The U.S. advance with a win. Canada advanced if the U.S. win or draw. Yeah, it is a U.S. B squad. Um, you could argue C squad even. So. Um, even though it'd be great uh, to see them win. Uh, they do have a B slash C squad and the referee has just signaled for half time, even though we haven't even reached the 45th minute. I don't think I've ever seen that. And I've watched hundreds of soccer games in my life. I don't think I've ever seen something like that. The clock read 44 20 when the referee signaled for half time. Well, that's a new one. I don't think the U.S. will mind. They lead it 2-0 at the break. It's been one-sided in this match, as expected. The U.S. looking to make a statement, and they have a two-goal lead over Martinique. I'm back after the break for the halftime report.
Welcome into the halftime report, everybody. Daryl DK was the star of the first half, wasn't he? Both goals for the U.S. came from him. And look at this, a little shout out from Mark Ingram. Of course, a star NFL running back. He's uh, loving the display from Daryl DK tonight. I think all U.S. fans are. Uh, it'll probably us will probably win four nil or five nil. Yep, yeah, probably so. And going over those first half highlights, it didn't take long for the first chance. Just about seven minutes in, Buzio had a free kick opportunity, just didn't have enough dip as it went over the bar. But then in the 14th minute, the breakthrough goal would come. Great assist from Hoppy. Beautiful cross right onto the head of DK who sent it off the post and in for the opening goal. Then in the 19th minute, off of a free kick, there would be another chance for DK, his header, that time going just wide. However, in the 23rd minute, DK would find his second. A bit of a sloppy goal in all honesty, but the U.S. won't care one bit. Gianluca Buzio had a wonderful chance. He had a rifle of a shot off the, off the uh, crossbar, I should say. And then on the rebound, leaping up for the header was DK. And, uh, well, making a little bit of a mess of it was Camille. And it ended up in the back of Martinique's goal. Then in the 35th minute, it was a chance for another a shot from Shaq Moore. Pretty comfortable save, though, by Melian. And then in the 44th minute, Right on the verge of halftime, the U.S. would have a wonderful chance for a third. Walker Zimmerman with a breakaway opportunity. Did have options to his left, decided to go for the shot, and the save was made by the Martinique keeper. And so look at those Group B live standings once more. It's Canada and the U.S. right now as it stands, both on six points. Haiti and Martinique uh, eliminated with no points. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure what you're asking, Luxers. Um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but, yeah, I'm I'm uh, with you for the most part there, Rainer. I, I think Buzio and DK uh, certainly are the two most likely players. If there's any on this t roster that have a chance of uh, playing in those World Cup qualifiers to get on that team. Uh, yeah, I tend to agree. Coming up after the break, I'll talk about Canada's impressive performance earlier tonight against Haiti. That's on the other side of the break. Stay tuned. U.S. up by two goals to nil.
Welcome back into the halftime report. Earlier today in the opening Group B game, it was Canada with a convincing 4-1 victory over Haiti. And it was Kyle Laren with a pair of goals tonight. Laren, who currently plays in Turkey for Bashik, this one of the stars of this Canadian team. An impressive performance from the Maple Leafs, no doubt. A reminder that Group B action concludes on Sunday at 5 Eastern time when the United States face Canada and then Martinique and Haiti square off simultaneously. Later on that night, it'll be the conclusion of Group A at 10 Eastern when Mexico takes on El Salvador and Guatemala face Trinidad and Tobago. Well, the second half kickoff is coming your way next. It's back to Kansas City after the break. The U.S. have a 2-0 lead. They look to add on to that lead after the break. Back to Kansas City we go as the second half gets underway momentarily. The United States up 2-0. Uh, looking at the comments here, how far do I think Jamaica goes? Um, I'd say I, I think they can make the semifinals. I do. I, I have to check the bracket uh, because, you know, there's a there, it depends whether they finish first or second in their group largely because – you know, I'll, I'll have to see their quarterfinal matchup first. But now, I'll have to, you know, just thinking out loud right now, I'll, I'll say Jamaica to the semis. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I, I think they have a shot because, you know, in recent history in this competition, Jamaica have done quite well. You said they can make it to the final Luxers. I mean, they can, but I'm not sure if they will. 
Um, I think semifinals is their ceiling, but you never know. You never know. And so off we go. The second half underway from Kansas City, Kansas at Children's Mercy Park. It's Martinique and White, the USA, wearing their red and blue kits tonight. And we'll see if the United States can pick up from right where they left off. It was a very efficient opening half from the United States and hopefully more of the same in these final 45 minutes. I'm sure we'll see a number of substitutions made by Greg Berhalter also. As Buzio plays it into the feet of DK. This ball takes a massive deflection, but Melian is there. A reminder that the U.S. are through to the quarterfinals with a win. Canada will have the same fate if the U.S. win or draw this match. And that will be a foul. Bit of a late whistle. But it eventually came as Patrick Berner was the victim of a bit of a late challenge delivered by well, I'm not sure if uh, that was necessarily a uh, a true foul from Bellow. I guess so. And this ball comes bouncing into the box. Matt Turner is there to claim. He hasn't had much work to do tonight, Matt Turner, but there when they've needed him. Yeah, I, I agree with you there, Luxers. I, I tend to agree with you there. I think that's fair to say. Although, I think Honduras can beat Jamaica as well. I'd maybe put Honduras in there, but outside of those four, that, that's all I think that can that can beat Jamaica, in all honesty. James Sands now. Walker Zimmerman, the captain tonight for the U.S. Out wide along the right touch line. It's Christian rolled on, a little delivering the cross, and... Making the back post run was Hoppy, but it just got by him. The U.S., however, went it back. This is Buzio. Now rolled on. Ahead for Shaq Moore. Moore cuts it back. One time strike. What a save. Christian rolled on. Denied a diving effort, and Melian keeps it out. Yeah, that was a really good... Uh, Pass from Moore to set up Roldan, but an even better save from the Martinique keeper. He's a big reason why it's the deficit is just two for Martinique. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I, I understand why people were disappointed with the first match, the first game for the U.S. I, I, just, I just feel like they didn't play well, to be honest. I mean, because cause Haiti honestly had a chance to win that game. I mean, if Haiti were just, you know, more clinical and took advantage of their chances, the U.S. could have easily uh, lost that game, I feel like. So I, I just feel like it was an underwhelming win for the U.S. the other night. Um, they, they just seemed a bit disjointed at times, which is completely understandable since, you know, it was the, it was the first match with this group of players. Uh, but but I do understand why some were disappointed. I mean, a win's a win in the first game of a tournament. Uh, you just want to get the three points. That's all that matters. And then as the tournament progresses, you hope the uh, the the performance uh, the performance uh, improves. So, and uh, looks like that's what we're seeing with the U.S. Although it you know you can only take this performance with a grain of salt. It is Martinique who they're playing? After all, that Canada match will be a true test. Williamson crosses, and the header is in. A third goal has arrived, and this time it's Miles Robinson for the United States' 50th minute, and it does not take long for the U.S. to find the back of the net here in the second half as the crowd rejoices once more in Kansas City. Another goal has arrived. And it comes off a set piece again. The corner kick came all the way through, but Eric Williamson got there for the U.S. Beautiful cross and just poor marking in the box 
from Martinique. Robinson left wide open. He was never missing from that close. The header is put away, and the U.S. have a 3-0 lead. The second international goal for Miles Robinson of Atlanta United. What's going on, Kathleen? Appreciate you uh, stopping by tonight. Yeah, the United States are rolling. Go USA. As I said, you know, the opponent's not the best, but it's not like the U.S. could choose their opponents. They're taking care of business in the manner that we were hoping to see them, uh, you know, win. We were hoping for a convincing victory after a bit of an underwhelming win against Haiti in the opener, it has to be said. And hopefully there's more goals to come for the United States tonight. And just as a heads up, I think uh, it was Luxers who touched on it. Um, if the U.S. were to win by five goals, they would jump ahead of Canada in the standings. Canada, as it stands, have... A superior goal differential. They have a plus six currently. The U.S. a plus four. We'll look at the live standings. That Canada and the U.S. both have six points, but Canada are ahead in the standings due to superior goal difference. And that's Haiti and Martinique, each with no points. If this result held, Martinique, just like Haiti, would bow out here and be eliminated from the tournament. A reminder that the U.S.-Canada much-anticipated group stage encounter will take place Sunday, 5 Eastern time, 2 Pacific. Can't wait to be on the call for that one. My score prediction was correct. Well, we'll see. We'll see about that, Emmanuel. It's looking good right now, but uh, I need them to score one more. I, I said 4-0, didn't I? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if it comes true. It's been all smiles tonight, hasn't it, for the U.S. This is sent wide for Shaq Moore of Tenerife in Spain. Great ball ahead. Daryl DK could be in on goal. DK squares it to the back post. And swooping in was Patrick Berner for Martinique. He comes to the rescue. An unselfish decision for DK. To look for the back post runner. And that was Bello trying to get on the end of that DK pass. What a chance for the United States. <laughs> that would be incredible, Rainer, but we can't get too far ahead of ourselves uh, right now. But yes, that would be incredible if, if they were to do that. Buzio raises. Both of his arms now delivers the outswinging corner kick. Comes back out. Who is Bobine heading it away? And now on the turn, it's passed ahead by a bull. And now a shot from distance. Turner the save. And he quickly snatches the rebound. Well, that's Martinique's best chance tonight. And it came for. Johnny Marajo. And this is the only way Martinique are going to possibly get a goal, and that's on the counterattack. Nice palm save as Turner's outstretched right hand was able to keep that ball out. 55th minute, still very early on in the second half. U.S. led 2-0 at the interval. And have scored another one since, courtesy of Miles Robinson. He may be a defender, but he was up on that corner kick. And able to score the header. The last two goals, in fact, have been headers for the U.S. in this game. Shaq Moore dancing on the ball, floats one in. It comes back to Moore. He lays it off. Rolled on shot is blocked. In the way was Babon, and it will be out for a U.S. throw in. I'll tell you what, Christian Rolled on has had multiple opportunities and, and some good looks as well. Most of his shots have been blocked. And it will be a corner, uh, sorry, a throw in pretty close to the corner flag. Shaq Moore will take it. 
It's sent back to Zimmerman. Now rolled on out wide for Zimmerman. Was it kept in play? Yes, it was by Bello, but shortly thereafter turned over. Nice combination, but Riviere couldn't quite link up with Marajo. And now the U.S. are looking for it. A fourth goal down the left wing. Closing in is Hoppy. Hoppy lays it off. He took a strong challenge. Busio now ahead. DK to rolled on. Rolled on. Taken down. It's a clean challenge. No penalty kick. And Hoppy's still down behind the play for the U.S. As Martinique up the pace, up the tempo, I should say. And that will be a foul. The whistle going against Buzio. <laughs> yeah, bodies were flying everywhere there in that sweet sequence. That was a wild sequence of play. They need to score more. You can't be too greedy, Luxers. But yeah, they, they do in order to uh, surpass Canada in the standings. That is true. Yeah, I'm liking the intensity as well. I am. And Babone will make way for Martinique. On comes Jugon. So Jugon's in. And that's the first substitution of the night for either team. And it was Riviere laying it off. And now blasted forward by Marajo. He went for goal. That was from a long way out. And couldn't put it on frame. Goal kick for the U.S. So Turner takes the U.S. goal kick. Now it comes to Zimmerman. Rolled on for DK. DK fouled. Well, it looks like the U.S. is set to make their first change, and it will be Nicholas Joachini, who we saw uh, coming as a sub on... Uh, what day was it? Uh, Sunday against Haiti. He'll come on here, replacing Shaq Moore. And it looks like uh, another substitution, or rather Joe Akini will replace Hoppy. And uh, the other change will see Acosta come in for Shaq Moore. So those are the Two changes from Greg Berhalter. Remember, you're allowed five substitutions. Rolled on. One touch pass ahead. DK streaming forward. He has a chance. He has a hat trick. Daryl DK, another one for the United States. Boy, is he good. 4-0 USA. Well, isn't that brilliant from the Orlando City man, Daryl DK, with three goals before the hour mark, and it's the fourth one for the U.S. DK's first touch set him up, just continued his run, and able to chip it over the keeper. That is just a cheeky little goal, intelligent play from DK. His eyes were only on one thing, and that was the goal. And he found it for the third time tonight. The only reason DK didn't start against Haiti was because of some fitness issues, but he's certainly been fit to play tonight. And he is making a statement, a hat trick in the 59th minute for Daryl DK. <laughs> yeah, Martinique are awful. That is true, Luxers. That is a fair point. Yeah, DK's the future, no doubt about it, Kathleen. I mean, the U.S. need a true goal scorer, a, a true number nine. And, you know, I know it's just against Martinique, but if DK can put in these types of performances on a consistent basis for the national team, 
he could be the answer going forward. And I said uh, in the Haiti game, you know, I, I think DK sh should be in Europe right now. I know he was with Barnsley on loan. He did great there. Uh, but, you know, he, with all due respect, I love MLS, but he he's too good. He's too good for Orlando City. I mean, he's doing great here in MLS, but he should be in Europe right now. He's, he's that talented. And this will be a handball against Eric Williamson with a half hour to play. And it will be Kevin Fortuné who takes this Martinique free kick. Christian Roldan, by the way, was given the assist for uh, that goal. We'll see how the U.S. do defending this free kick. Turner has his wall set. And Kevin Fortuné is ready to deliver. There's the whistle. Fortuné hits the wall. It came through. Second chance blocked at the six-yard box by Zimmerman. Second chance now, and that's just put wide. Well, a scare there for the U.S. The second chance came for the substitute, Joe Gaunt. The U.S. just struggled to clear, but no harm done. Well, with three games in the span of eight days in the group stage. Um, it'll then be a whole week off for both the U.S. and Canada before their quarterfinal match. And here's DK. Oh, wow, they now... I apologize, CONCACAF has now ruled it back to an own goal on Camille. They just showed the updated uh, scoring summary so I'm sorry. They originally ruled an own goal. Then they said it was DK's goal. Now they've said it's an own goal again. So DK has two. Sorry. I uh, thought it was a hat trick, but apparently not. And now a penalty kick has been awarded to Martinique. Acosta took him down. Fortuné draws the penalty for Martinique. And what a chance here for Martinique, who have uh, rarely been in the attacking third to try to get on the board here from the spot. But yeah, so uh, DK needs one more for a hat trick. They they officially have ruled it an own goal uh, on that what we thought was the second goal for uh, DK. Nonetheless, DK's had a fantastic performance tonight. So, a penalty against Acosta, and it will be Emmanuel Rivier stepping up for Martinique. Matt Turner had a PK save back in January in his U.S. men's national team debut against Trinidad and Tobago. And I can tell you, as a Revolution fan, he comes up with huge penalty saves time and time again. Can Turner deliver here? Rivier stepping up for Martinique. Here's the run-up. And it's a goal. Turner didn't even dive. Rivier slotting that one into the bottom left corner. And in the 64th minute, Martinique have found the back of the net. And Turner exchanging some words afterwards with Rivier. Well, that's a composed finish. Turner was trying to guess which way he'd go and just got caught in the middle. And so Martinique are on the board in Kansas City. Bit of an unexpected goal from Martinique. But it has come. Uh, I think he's had one save for the U.S. men's national team. Uh, yeah, because he's this is only his third game for the U.S. men's national team, Rainer. And he had that, he had that save in the friendly against Trinidad. And then his only game since then for the U.S. were was the other day against Haiti and then today, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you, uh, Bader. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly for tuning in. Yeah, goal for Martinique. It'll turn into a consolation goal in the end, most likely. But 
It's at least something for Martinique to hang their hat on. And it's Riviere's second goal of this Gold Cup. He has both Martinique goals in this tournament so far. Oh, that's great combination play. Acosta square ball. Great pass out wide from Joe Acchini. Now it's held on the far side by Bello. Into the middle with Buzio. Now Zimmerman. Zimmerman held it for a bit too long, eventually turning it over. He'll have to get back into position, but it's James Sands who wins it back for the U.S. The header flicked on by DK. Could be an opportunity. Joe Acchini went down. No foul. The whistle never came. But here come the U.S. once more. It's Bello across Joe Acchini. Maybe with a chance. But sliding in to break it up was Sebastian Cretinois. That was actually a really good slide tackle from Cretinois. It will be a corner. Bello over to take it for the U.S. As we're about three quarters through the match now. Looks like Bello will actually leave it for a fellow teammate. And that is Gianluca Buzio. Ninth corner of the night. Here comes the in-swinger. Man, it's headed away, but not out of danger by Martinique. Back in it comes from Buzio. Once more cleared. But only as far as James Sands. 67th minute in Kansas City. And a foul will be called. The referee was seeing if advantage could be awarded, but in the end called it back. The foul committed by Stefan Abol. And so both Buzio and Bello standing over this U.S. free kick. And before that, the United States will make their third substitution. And that will be it for Daryl DK. So he didn't officially get a hat trick, but boy, was he influential tonight. A brace for DK, and his replacement will be Giassi Zardes. DK gets a huge round of applause from this crowd, deservedly so. And on comes Zardes of the Columbus crew. Oh, it's a dangerous ball to the back post. And it was just out of the reach of Walker Zimmerman, who came sliding in. It will be a Martinique goal kick in the end. And now Martinique's set to make their second change. Reminder of what those groupy live standings look like. Canada and the U.S. both on six points. Haiti and Martinique, no points. As Rivier will come off the goal score for Martinique, replaced by Timon. It will actually be a pair of substitutions here for Martinique as Fortuné comes off for Rupernet. So Rupernet is on. And the goal kick's taken. Now it's back with Turner. That pass handled by Bello, once again, thank you everyone for tuning in. Much appreciated as always. It's been a blast covering this Gold Cup so far. Here's a direct ball forward. Zardes could be in. Giassi Zardes, fresh off the bench, going for goal, and he has a goal. Giassi Zardes tucks it in far post, and the U.S. reclaim a four-goal lead in the 70th minute. Well, just like that, in the blink of an eye, the U.S. have scored a fifth. 
Rolled on with a gorgeous through ball. It just got through to Zardes. And then the finish was superb. He picked his corner quite well, didn't he? Excellent finish from Giassi Zardes, who just came in for DK, who scored two himself. 5-1 U.S. <laughs> yeah, the goals keep on coming for the U.S. Yeah, that that uh, exactly, uh, Rainer. That um, finishing first in the group will certainly be beneficial, for sure. Giassi Zardes, in his 58th appearance for the U.S., has scored 13 goals, second fastest player to double-digit goals and assists in U.S. men's national team history. Now for Martinique, it's Burner. His shot is blocked. Second chance. Cross delivered. Turner's there at the near post. And now we'll haul it in. Wow, that, that cross almost ended up being a goal from Patrick Burner. You've always supported uh, Giassi. Well, yeah, that makes sense. You, you, you did say you're a Galaxy fan, right? Yep. Zardes uh, was certainly a big part of that Galaxy team years back. The U.S. with two remaining substitutions if they choose to use them, which I'm sure Greg Berhalter will with the scoreline as it is. Zimmerman back to Turner. And now Buzio turns. They'll send it wide. And this is where the U.S. can be lethal. Bello ahead for Zardes. Zardes just got it caught up behind him. Joachini a chance and the save is made. Enough of a touch for Emelian. Joachini can't believe it. That ball fell perfectly for him. And it hit the inside of the left uh, leg of... Meslian, and it will be Buzio heading over to take this U.S. corner kick. It doesn't seem like the United States are stopping at five goals. In swinger, sent away, and now settled by Rupernay trying to hold it up. Now it's lofted ahead. Martin, he can break out here. This is... Brought forward by the substitute, Dimon. Dimon going for goal. Tried to curl it into the far corner, but it's an easy save for Matt Turner. Yeah, going back to that Zardes goal. What a pass from Roldan. The finish was sublime as well. Roldan now with two assists. He's He's been pressed me tonight, even though he hasn't gotten on the score sheet. Yep, 5-1, Nate. 5-1. U.S. are rolling. You already know. That's headed out. The live standings look like this. Canada and the U.S. six points. Haiti and Martinique have none. Canada, after that U.S. fifth goal, have a one better goal difference. And now that can change here. Zardes, another chance. But the stop is made by Meslian. Giassi's a great person. Yeah. 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 No, he's a likable guy for sure. What's going on, Vaughn? How are you doing? If the U.S. were to score one more goal without conceding, they'd leapfrog Canada in the standings. Even though their goal difference would be the same, the U.S. would go ahead on goals scored. That's the next tie break. And that's knocked out of play. Why is that so important, you may ask? Well... If the U.S. were to leapfrog Canada in the table, that would mean that in that final game between U.S. and Canada, Canada would have to win to finish first in the group. Of course, the U.S., you know, wouldn't necessarily be, be content with a draw, even though in that such scenario they would finish in first still. They, they would still like to go for the win, but it would still be a uh, a more comfortable situation for the U.S. heading into that final game. That's for sure. 
And so Martinique will make their final two changes now. Off comes Errell and in comes Grillet. And the other change we'll see with 15 minutes to play. Um, I'll get the, I'll get that uh, number in a moment. Okay, Marajo just came off, and uh, Vitulan came in. So Vitulan is his replacement. And so Martinique have used all five of their substitutions now. When FC Dallas played Columbus, he tried to get Giassi's autograph. Yeah. Yeah. This is show gone. Oh, it's a nice ball forward. Here's the chip. It was too tight of an angle. The right idea from Rupert the Martinique substitute. Yeah, the U.S. have had a few moments defensively where they've been exposed. So that pass is intercepted by Gratinois. And Rappernay once again trying to set it up. It was knocked away by Miles Robinson. You've met Giassi several times in L.A. He's amazing. That's awesome, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've never met him, um, but uh, I have I have seen him play. I went to, I've, uh, between Revolution Galaxy games and Revolution Columbus games. I actually went to the Revolution Columbus game at Gillette earlier this season. Uh, so that's the most recent game I've seen. Giassi's artist play in person. Yeah, definitely, Vaughn. U.S.-Canada will be a lot of fun on Sunday. I'm looking forward to it, most definitely. Yep, can't wait for it. This is Shaq Moore down the right touchline. Played ahead into the path of rolled on. His cross is cut out. Knocked down and out by Cretinois. Corner kick for the U.S., about a dozen minutes remaining. And heading over to take this corner kick is Buzio, as has been the case for the most of the night. Plenty of corner kicks for Buzio to take tonight, that's for sure. The U.S. fans enjoying themselves in Kansas City before the corner. Greg Berhalter will make his final two changes. And uh, look at this. We will see Walker Zimmerman come off and making his very first appearance for the U.S. men's national team is Donovan Pines. Great to see. So Pines comes on, and uh, Williamson will also come off for Jackson Ewell. Those are uh, the two final substitutions from Greg Berhalter. Thanks, Isaac, for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. Do I think the U.S. defense looks weak? Um, at times, yes. I mean, not necessarily weak, but um, they they have been exposed at times. They, they, you know, they have they have a couple of flaws for sure. They they can they can I think uh, improve on defense. That's the one area that concerns me. You know, with this team. Um, they can once in a while just have a lapse that can be costly against, you know, a much uh, more quality opponent, of course. As that deflects off of the moan, and it will be a U.S. goal kick. 80 minutes play, just about. Donovan Pines, by the way, uh, making his international debut. He plays his club soccer for D.C. United. Zardo's committed the foul. We are in the 80th minute, Nate. So, uh, yeah, we're um, getting pretty close to the end. 
Yep. About 10 minutes to play. How close is the U.S. men's soccer team from winning a World Cup? Not that close at the moment, Vaughn. <laughs> They've got a long ways to go until we can talk about the U.S. You know, winning a World Cup. But hey, I have my eyes set on 2026 and even 2022. I think um, I, I think it's an exciting time. We'll, we'll have to be patient, of course, but the future is certainly bright. The future is certainly bright. Player down for the U.S. Meanwhile, and that does appear to be um, James Sands. Yeah, he took the uh, he took a slap to the face, the left hand of Burner made connection with the face of Sands. Uh, Honduras plays Saturday, Nate. But uh, yeah, um, do I think they'll win on uh, on Saturday? Yeah, I do. I do. I I, th I think Honduras Panama is going to be a good game. But uh yeah, I think Honduras are the better team at the end of the day. I could see a draw, but I think Honduras will will eke it out. Uh 2-1 I'll say. Yeah, I think they'll get the job done. Yeah, yeah. That is that is true Luxers. Um But I I think this generation has the potential to uh this young generation that we're seeing come up, I think they have the potential to be the best U S team we've ever seen. So uh, of course, you know, winning a world cup is just a monumental task considering how many great t uh, teams they are. There are, I should say um, great countries. There are, but uh, you know, I'm just hoping in my lifetime, I'll see the U S lift that trophy, lift a world cup trophy. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. But soccer is growing in this country. All of you guys know that very well. Um, it's getting more and more popular, and there's more and more talent. So the future is bright for sure. It's a great time to be a fan of the U.S. men's national team. So Sands... Yeah, it looks like he just got poked in the eye ultimately. So he's off on the sideline. He'll re-enter shortly, I suppose. And they will give it to Martinique here. Zardo's claiming it should have been a U.S. throw-in. The referee arguing otherwise. Or actually, looks like offside was called. My apologies. So if this result holds, which let's... Be real, it will. Canada and the U.S. will advance to the quarterfinals. So that U.S.-Canada game on Sunday will all be about first place, which is important, I should I should mention. On the ball for Martinique is Rupernet. Now on the ball is Jugan. Yeah, no, I, I know Luxers. I mean, it's not the Gold Cup's not entirely pointless. I, I mean, it's it's not it's not entirely pointless because after all, it is important to win a trophy, even though it's just the Gold Cup against not the best competition, and even in the U.S. case where it's the B or C team. Yeah, it's nice to win though. Exactly, Isaac. Uh, you know, because the U.S. want it want to, uh, you know, develop a winning culture, and you know. They did that by winning the Nations League, and can they continue that winning culture by winning the Gold Cup? It's it's still important to win trophies, even if it's not you know the best competition. Um, but yeah, I, I certainly understand what you're saying, Luxers. The U.S. and Canada will square off Sunday, five Eastern, two Pacific. I will be on the call for that match, and in that series history, the U.S. leads with 17 wins, 10 draws. 10 losses in Gold Cup play. The U.S. are undefeated against Canada. Three wins and one drop. Do I think an MLS team will win the CONCACAF Champions League? Yeah. It's in the near future, an MLS team will win CONCACAF Champions League. Uh, obviously, the Philadelphia Union are the only team left uh, in the this year's edition. We'll see how they can do um, in their semifinal matchup. But... Um, 
But no, I, I think in the next two, three years, we'll see an MLS team pull through. They've come so close time and time again. I mean, just last year, LAFC so close to beating Tigres. Um, it'll it, it'll come it, it'll come for an MLS team to win Concacaf Champions League for sure. Eighty <laughs> sixth minute now, U.S. leading five one in their middle match of the Concacaf Gold Cup. Now Donovan Pines, wide for Acosta. Kellen Acosta up the line, chasing it as Christian rolled on. Getting there first is Cretinois. It's a poor pass from the keeper. There with it is Jackson Ewell trying to loft it into the path of Zardes, but the flag went up anyways, offside call. Oh, yeah, Vaughn. No, there's nothing like the U.S.-Canada rivalry in hockey. No doubt about that, man. Here is rolled on. Delivers the cross. Zardes is there. Zardes with a golden opportunity. But sliding in was Don Don for uh, Martinique. And uh, that was a perfectly timed challenge. It really was. It will be another U.S. corner kick. How many friendlies do we have scheduled? Um... I don't think any right now, Luxers, because we have World Cup qualifiers a month after the uh, a month after the Gold Cup ends, and there's no uh, international break between when the Gold Cup ends and World Cup qualifiers begin. So it's going to be all World Cup qualifiers. <laughs> that that is super important coming up. And that'll be out on the far side for a U.S. throw it, Joe Akini. We'll take it. Three minutes to play. Into the middle, it comes to Buzio. Now rolled on ahead for Acosta. Out it goes for a corner kick. The touch came from Samuel Camille. Oh yeah, absolutely, Kathleen. Um, I'll I'll be a U.S. men's national team and U.S. women's national team supporter until I die. <laughs> Who does New England play next? Uh, the Revs play uh, Atlanta on Saturday. Here's the glancing header, save made, second chance. Joe Akini staying with it along the end line finds Bello. Bello the shot puts it wide. Wow, the U.S. could easily have six or seven by now. Um, uh, I'm not sure, Isaac. I think, um, yeah, I, I, I think playing, playing with this level of confidence against higher teams would definitely help. Uh, when, whenever you're playing in a competitive game, uh, it's, it, you know, competitive games are always, you know, just more of a uh, – there's more of a driving factor within the players. As good as it is to schedule friendlies against quality European sides, friendlies just aren't the same as competitive games as Acosta crosses in, and that's a perfectly timed slide again from Don Don. It will be another corner kick. Joe Aquini was lurking. He's he's uh, hungry for a goal, that's for sure. Um, Am I going to be live for the World Cup, Nate? Um. Uh, I don't, I don't think so because I, I, well, uh, hopefully for a few games, um, I'll be in college by the time the, the world cup takes place. I wish the world cup was in the summer, uh, next year. Uh, it's a bummer that it's in the fall. So I'll be, I'll be in my first semester of college. So, uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how, how I'm going to be able to do games crossed in. There's a chance. There's a goal. It's another one for the U.S., and I just mentioned it moments ago. Nicholas Joachini has found his goal at last. It's number six for the United States, and it comes at the death in the 90th minute.
the U.S. finally get their reward, or rather Joe Acchini finally gets his reward is what I meant to say, and the U.S. finally get their sixth. The cross coming from Buzio, and just no one marking Joe Acchini, and he was there for the one-time finish from close range. The U.S. continued to pile on. Yeah, Costa did used to play for Dallas. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Nate, hopefully I can do some World Cup games. As I said, I'll, I'll be in college, so it'll be difficult, but um, we'll see. <laughs> and so with that sixth goal for the U.S., that means the U.S. have jumped ahead of Canada in the table due to goals scored. More goals scored for the U.S. I wouldn't say that, Luxers, that the U.S. have had fear playing European teams. That's kind of silly to say. They, they've had some decent performances against European sides before. I mean, just look at their uh, game against Belgium in the World Cup. And I can think of some, you know, friendlies. I know they're just friendlies, but I can think of some friendlies against uh, England, France. I think they tied France. I think they drew against England, too. Here come Martinique. It's a breakaway chance. Matt Turner, the save. A diving stop. By the way, there's five minutes being added on. And now here come the U.S. the other way. The goalie's way out. Zardes has got by him. And returning to position is Meslian, the Martinique keeper, is eventually stabbed out of play. The U.S. take the throw in. Yeah, the, the World Cup in the fall is just going to be stupid, Vaughn. Yeah, it's uh, – I don't know why it's in the Qatar. It's it's a joke. But What's going on, Guillermo? How you doing, man? Yes, uh, Luis Alberto Zaga did score seven goals against Martinique. That is correct. <laughs> yep. Yeah, in yeah, in college I will be involved in the media department. Yep, yep. Yeah, I'm I'm visiting actually a number of uh colleges next week, so that's why I'll be away for a lot of uh next week. But uh yeah, I'll see uh yeah, I, I'm looking to go to a school with, you know, good a good broad sports broadcasting school. Um and yeah, I'll be involved, you know, sports media, communications, broadcast journalism. The majors vary. The, the 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 majors vary from school to school, but yep. Yeah, it's possible I could do my school games on radio. Most certainly, most certainly, uh, Guillermo. So look at those live standings. Um oh no, Canada actually have one more goal scored than the US. I apologize. So the US need another goal to jump ahead of Canada. That's why they're going all out for another one. So my apologies. I thought the US had had another goal, but uh no. So the US and Canada are currently both on six uh, points. We know that, but they both have the same goal difference, but Canada have one more goal scored. No, uh, Jonathan, I wouldn't say park the bus and play for a draw against Canada, even if they do get a, another one here for the U.S. do. Sorry, I miscalculated the amount of goals scored uh, for both the U.S. and Canada. But if the U.S. were to score late here and they were in a scenario where a draw would get them first place, they're, 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 they're still going to go for a win no matter what. And here is Stefan Abel, and that was a hopeless shot. Goal kick for the U.S. Yeah, you're right, Guillermo. Sorry, I, I misspoke. That's my bad. Well, Vaughn, the uh, the reason they um, the World Cup uh, isn't in the summer is because it's like 130 degrees in the summer in Qatar <laughs> or something crazy like that. Oh yeah, I, I might have missed your comment. Sorry, Luxers. I uh, yeah, yeah, you did say that. I did see that comment. Sorry. Yep, yeah, you are right. That that was my fault. The U.S. need another one. Yeah, the summer in the Gulf area is unlivable. Exactly. That should do it. The final whistle coming any moment now. 
And there it is. That's all she wrote tonight. The United States get the win in convincing fashion. The final score in this one, Martinique won the United States of America six. And the U.S. have punched their ticket into the quarterfinals of the 2021 CONCACAF Gold Cup. <laughs> All right, I'll see you, Guillermo. Thanks for stopping in. Laundry time for you, yeah. Uh, it's probably laundry time for me, too, in all honesty. <laughs> yeah, the CONCACAF ball is kind of sick. No doubt, Isaac. No doubt. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll need to win, Luxers, to uh, – we'll need to win, actually, to uh, to get first place. So all eyes will be on another three points for the U.S. on Sunday. And uh, I greatly appreciate you guys tuning in. That will conclude my broadcast. It was Daryl DK with a pair of goals. Uh, Miles Robinson had one. We had an own goal. Joe Akini had one. And then Zardes another. And the play of the game, well, there's a lot of options to choose from. But it's got to be Daryl DK's second goal. What a cheeky finish. Chipping it over the keeper and sending... The U.S. well on their way to a victory. Hope you guys enjoyed. Enjoy the rest of your night, everybody. The United States win in fashion 6-1. They defeat Martinique. So long, everybody. And I'll see you guys next time.